Hi, and welcome to part two of managing Active Directory with PowerShell. In the last video, we went over installing the service and as well as creating our forest. And then we left off the video, basically creating our forest and uh, promoting our server as a domain controller and then rebooted. And here we are. So the server is fully rebooted now. Uh, we do have the role of Active Directory Domain Services on the server. Um, so the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is OUs, which is organizational units. Uh, so if I just open up Active Directory here, it actually comes with some built-in organizational units here. So we do have uh, domain controllers as a organizational unit. So we're going to find out how to create these um, and how to really manage them through PowerShell alone. So uh, let's just close out of this window for now. And let's take a look at a few of the commands here just to get us started. So uh, the first one that we're gonna take a look at is just gonna be new AD organizational unit. So let me just zoom in here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. All right, that should be better. All right, so we have new AD organizational unit. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do, well, we're gonna put in a name here and we're gonna put that name to Toronto. And then we're gonna do a description of OU, oops, OU or office in Toronto. And that's all we're gonna do. So we're just gonna do this and we are gonna run this line of code. So now if we actually open up our Active Directory, we will actually see our organizational unit for Toronto. If we double click on it, we can go inside of it. We see that nothing is in there. So by default, when you create an OU, uh, there is nothing in that OU by default. If we right click on it, we can click on properties and we can actually see some properties. Uh, so we can actually see the description that we set. We can actually see that we can still set like a street, city, state, province, uh, postal code, or country. Uh, this might be useful in like larger organizations, especially if you are making these OUs more location-based, uh, which I believe is now most of the time uh, people do create OUs based on locations and no longer roles. Um, so what we can do is we can actually see that this view is quite limited. So what I like to do right away in my Active Directory users and computers, just to give me a little bit more visibility, is I like to click on the view at the top here and click on advanced features. Now this is gonna give you a lot more visibility. You're gonna see that there's a lot more um, containers and some different folders there. Um, but we still see Toronto. If we right click on Toronto now and click on properties, we get a lot more tabs here. And if we actually click on the object tab, we're gonna see that we actually have this flag, this checkbox for protect object from accidental deletion. Now what this means is if I go and try to delete it, it won't let me. It'll say that I don't have sufficient privileges even though I'm in as administrator. So this is super handy if you don't want people to accidentally delete organizational units, uh, which may contain users, may contain computers, uh, and would actually delete everything that's in there as well. So we definitely don't want that to happen. So let's go take a look back in PowerShell and see this flag. Um, so we have our new AD organizational unit here with Toronto. And if we had done um, protected from accidental deletion, you can actually set this to true, which is the default uh, functionality, or we can set it to false. If we don't want that, I definitely don't really recommend um, putting the protected from accidental deletion to false. The only time that I actually ever set that is if I'm going in and creating a script to actually delete OUs. Uh, but even then, like definitely use that with extreme caution. So let's go ahead and let's just remove that line here. And let's see what else we can do with PowerShell. So we know how to create an, an organizational unit but let's view the um, organizational units. So we can do get ad organizational unit. And what we'll do is we'll do a filter 
and then curly brackets open and close. And then we can do a um, name and then we're going to do space dash EQ for equals. And then we're going to do a double quotes and do Toronto. And if we run this here, we will see that we actually do get our um, organizational unit that we did create. Let me actually just make it slightly bigger here. So we do get our organizational unit back. That is awesome. Uh, and we can actually get more of the property. So if we do properties and then star, we can actually see this as well. Now, if you were on a, um, a situation that you had multiple domains um, or multiple uh, domain controllers, you can definitely specify the server as jacked.ca and get the same results here. You may have to do this if you work in an environment with more than one domain. Um, so here we have all the details here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is let's try to go ahead and delete this AD organizational unit. Um, so the way that I like to do it is I like to set a um, variable called OU, and we're going to set it equal to our get AD organizational unit. So we are now holding that AD organizational unit in that variable. And what I like to do is I like to call that variable, and then we're going to use the pipe command, and we're going to pipe that to remove AD organizational unit. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to run that. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to perform this action? We're going to say yes to all. And again, we get that same error message of access is denied. So we've seen a few things here. So we've seen that when we run this command, we get a prompt, uh, which we may not want if we're scripting it and we want to do it all the time. We don't really want to be clicking on anything. So the way to remove that prompt is actually to add a, a parameter called dash confirm and then set that to dollar sign false. So if we run this now again, we're going to see that we only get the access is denied. So how can we actually delete this um, all through a script here? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call that variable again, OU here. And we're going to want to pipe that to set AD organizational unit. And then if we do a dash here and then a P, we're going to see that we do get the protected from accidental deletion. And we can go ahead and set that to false. So if we actually run these three lines here, it is gone. If we go back into our Active Directory, we no longer see our Toronto organizational unit. So that is perfect. So that is one way to create um, organizational units. Let's actually take a look at a bit of a better practice um, it's easier to read, easier to kind of use um, again and again. Uh, I was just changing some simple variables, of course. You'd be able to assign these to variables, put the variables at the top of the file, um, and have it pretty good. But we can actually make it one step better. So let's go ahead and let's create a hash table, uh, which we've seen these in the tutorial videos. I'm going to be putting a link to my full PowerShell tutorial videos down in the description below. If you haven't watched them, uh, they will definitely be useful for these series, just like the automating Active Directory series. I'm not really going to be going in depth in the PowerShell commands themselves. Um, this video, I'm concentrating mostly on the actual Active Directory commandlets that we haven't seen before and going in depth with those. Um, but as far as like um, the different types of um, containers that PowerShell has, the if statements, the loops, I will not be going over. Um, but definitely, I will be linking the videos to the tutorials that explain those. So let's create a variable called OU info. And we're going to be setting this to a hash table. So to create a hash table, it's just the at symbol open and close curly brackets, and let's put some data in here. So we're going to do name equals Toronto, and we're going to do the description equals OU for 
office in Toronto. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the AD organizational unit using just this. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. Um, so we have our AD here. We don't have Toronto anymore, so that's perfect. So what a lot of people will do is they'll create this hash table. They'll do the new AD organizational unit, call it with dollar sign OU info. Now, this won't give you an error, but it will not give you what you expect to happen. So let's actually just run this to see what happens. Um, and then we're going to fix it. And then we're going to show you the proper way. So let's actually just run this here. And let's go into our Active Directory. So we don't see Toronto, but we do see system.collections.hashtable. So what it did, it actually just stored it as our hash table, like not the actual values that's within it. So if we double click on it, we see that there's nothing. We can go into properties. Description has nothing in it, even though we set a description. And we were wondering what happened. Um, so let's just uncheck this protect from accidental deletion. And let's just manually delete it here. And let's go back to our PowerShell drawing table. So the thing that we're going to want to do is change this dollar sign for an at symbol. So as we can see, the color went back to orange as if it's a variable, uh, but we don't have that dollar sign in front of it. So if we actually run this now, go back into our Active Directory, we can actually see our organizational unit. So this is where that comes in handy. Uh, we can create tons of these. It makes it very, very easy to read. We know the description. We know the name. It makes this line of code very, very short. Because of course, if we start having a lot of parameters, if we're setting the street, the address, the postal code, that line of PowerShell will greatly like span um, this whole window. And you'll have to scroll to see everything. If you put everything in here, it makes it very, very easy to see, very easy to change in the future as well. So. And then we can, again, just delete it the exact same way. So that's pretty much it for AD organizational units um, that I can really think of. Uh, so we've seen the creating new AD organizational units. We've seen how to get the AD organizational units as well. Um, now, you could even get all the AD organizational units if you really wanted to. So if we did a just get AD organizational unit and then did a filter and then a star and we ran that, it will actually get us all the OUs, which right now is actually just domain controllers. Um, so let's actually just go ahead and recreate the Toronto OU and run this again. So here we are, we have the Toronto and the Domain Controllers OU. So there's a lot of possibility here. Uh, we've seen the set AD organizational unit. We've seen it mostly for the protected from accidental deletion, but you can definitely change the name of the OUs as well. So um, let's actually make another example. Um, so let's take our Toronto OU and let's change the name of it to Canada. So let's just do get that and then we're going to do set ed organizational unit and we should be able to set the name or as long as so if we do set ad object then i believe name might not be a option to change on organizational units uh, let me just double check here. There's a lot of like different um, options here. So let's just see if this will work because I do believe that it is possible. Uh, so there it is. Uh, so to rename one, you won't use the set AD organizational unit, but in fact, just use the rename dash AD object and then pass it the parameter of new name. And then we change it to Canada. And it did actually change the OU to Canada here. Now, of course, 
we would typically have to change the description as well in this case. So if we did again, OU and then uh, re, um, but of course we're gonna have to actually grab that OU again because we did change the name of it here. So let's just do Canada and then we're gonna do OU and we're gonna pipe that to set AD organizational unit description OU for Canada and let's run this here so there it is and then if we go ahead so we can see that the old one is there so if we get that again and we view the data here we could see that our description has changed and if we go in our active directory go into properties, we see OU for Canada. So everything's changed. We can see that the names changed. Everything there has changed. Um, so that is pretty much it. And then we've also seen how to remove uh, the or AD organizational units and the little gotchas that are there uh, with the protected from accidental deletion and the confirm just to be able to really script that properly. So that is it for AD organizational units. So in the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at AD users. So we are gonna be, um, in the first video, we are just gonna look at creating users and placing them in OUs, moving them into different OUs, because uh, I feel like that could be a video on its own. And then we're gonna take a look at viewing, removing and updating users, because I believe that I can fit all three of those in a video. And then we're going to be taking a look at the groups. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.